Hi, I'm Robert and this is Brain Stuff. Now at some point, you've probably all dreamed of packing up and moving to a faraway country. It's a nice idea, right? You just get away from it all, kick up your feet and live the good life. And if you really want to put some space between yourself and the hustle bustle of Earth, well, the moon just might be the place for you. It's 384,400 kilometers away, close enough to travel back home, but you know, uh, far enough to keep away random salesmen and your in-laws, keep them from knocking on your door. So why aren't we there yet? The holdup comes down to a few crucial factors. First of all, there's the technology. From a purely technological standpoint, we know we can reach the moon. We've done it before, but reaching the moon and living on it are two different things entirely. Future lunar colonists will need to bring or create their own sustainable sources of power, air, water, food, and shelter. That's because bringing material from Earth is incredibly expensive. For example, with our current technology, it costs about $400,000 to haul one gallon of water into space. So we have to figure out how to make a lunar colony as self-sufficient as possible. Future colonists may rely on the moon's uh, frozen water, for example, and grow food in hydroponic farms. And this is all possible, but prohibitively expensive. Most experts believe that our methods of reaching the moon have to become more cost-efficient and energy-efficient to support large-scale operations. These advancements will require a lot of effort, which means they'll need significant financial support. Both governments and private entities are giving this a shot. But each path comes with its own strings attached. Private industries require the potential for short or long-term profit, and government-funded space programs require political and popular support from their citizens. And that can be pretty difficult at times. In early 2010, economics and politics in the U.S. indefinitely postponed NASA's latest plans for a moon base. But America's not the only player in the game. That same year, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, unveiled plans to establish an unmanned lunar base by 2020. And in May of 2014, Russia also revealed its proposal to build a permanent moon base by 2030. And in the private sphere, Google's Lunar X Prize competition continues to advance small-scale lunar spacecraft technology by encouraging teams from around the world to create hardware, software, and vehicles for future lunar endeavors. So there's no question the race to settle the moon is on. And there are numerous potential benefits. It's possible that we could build spacecraft more efficiently, mine helium-3, and establish our species' first foothold in the stars. And at this point, it seems more feasible than ever before. According to the latest plans, human beings could be living on the moon within the next few decades. But will the latest rounds of ambitious proposals lead to real lunar colonies or another round of financial boondoggles? Is living on the moon worth the cost? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And hey, check out our website, brainstuffshow.com, for the science behind everything from Krispy Kreme donuts to Captain America.